Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about a very controversial figure. Controversial to me at least, but I guess not to Dr. Phil because Dr. Phil keeps putting this person on their panels. I'm talking about Eli Ehrlich. So Eli Ehrlich, for those who don't know, is a trans activist. Eli was born male, biologically, and identified as female early on in their life and decided to transition. Now considers themselves, I guess, the Robin Hood of the trans movement as far as the things that they do. I find a lot of their actions to be very questionable with a whole ton of red flags. So this video, I'm going to be diving into some of the issues that I have with this particular person. And I'm also gonna be reacting to their time on the Dr. Phil show on a recent episode that just aired on Dr. Phil regarding gender ideology and gender, I guess, ideology access in schools. So let's get into this video. Take a look at this first clip. I love books. There's a stack of books behind me though that are very disturbing and troubling. They are manifestations of this new phenomena that is called queer theory and gender theory. What they have done is they have put into the form of little cardboard books for little hands, big ideas like transgenderism, transsexuality, binary, non-binary. Unfortunately, what they are doing is now adulterating the minds of children that they cannot absorb or process. It is called grooming because grooming amounts to having age-inappropriate conversations with children, oftentimes for nefarious purposes, but we do know that these are conversations that are best left at these young ages for parents with their children. Well, Ushri, you have issues with Eli's gender unicorn as a teaching tool, right? Yes. Tell us what we're looking at here. Well, you were looking at TSER's fantastic little gender unicorn. It teaches students of all ages about gender identity, expression, and attraction. It teaches them that everything is on a spectrum and they should be able to explore and express themselves. So let's take a look at the actual website uh, for TSER and this type of curriculum, the gender unicorn, discussing gender identity, gender expression, sex assigned at birth, female, male, or other, physically attracted to women, men, or other genders, and emotionally attracted to women, men, and other genders. Again, these are children that this curriculum is being taught to. Children, four and five-year-olds and up. Now, do you think a child of that age can understand emotional attraction and sexual attraction? Why are we even discussing any type of sexuality with children? Why? It's insane to me. This is indoctrination, this is grooming, this is wrong on so many levels. And as you can see, all the way at the bottom, you're gonna find that Eli Ehrlich is one of the contributors to this course, if you want to even call it that. And, and you say that this is appropriate uh, beginning in kindergarten. I mean, I, I've worked with parents who brought it into preschools even. They are teaching children as young as four, as you heard in this clip, preschool in kindergarten about gender ideology, about sexual preference, about sexual attraction. <laughs> I mean, in what universe, in what universe is this okay? I just don't understand. And I love the fact that the woman who is, you know, combating this idea was saying that, you know, this is inappropriate because we're talking about age inappropriate topics that are being discussed with children that should not be having these discussions with adults in school. Age of four, a child is not gonna know what emotional attraction means versus physical attraction. No, children and it is, children do get crushes. This, no, no. this is a completely age inappropriate <clears throat> product to be putting in front of children and, and hijacking this unicorn concept. These are conversations that parents should be having with their children, not teachers or a facility at a school. Eli Ehrlich actually got in trouble not too long ago because they decided to make a public post on Instagram where they urged young people underage, under the age of 18, that if they don't have access to HRT, which are hormone replacement therapy drugs in their state, so let's say their state doesn't allow for young children or minors to have access to gender affirming care, Eli, <laughs> Mr. Uh, Robin Hood, decided that they were going to make a post where they urged young people to DM them privately if they want access to HRT drugs. Yes, 
non-prescribed drugs Eli was going to mail to these people illegally. Here's a clip from Blair White. Blair White is another trans person, but thankfully this trans person is not drinking the Kool-Aid. <laughs> and Blair White did a full expose on Eli Ehrlich. And here's a little bit of what they said about the Instagram post. So Eli has been making headlines for publicizing and admitting to operating an illegal drug trafficking scheme aimed at providing hormones and trans specific drugs to underage children. Now that's already incredibly depraved, right? Like honestly, the video could just end there and we could just write this person off as like, this is a monster. Yeah, for real. And you may have seen people like libs of TikTok and Matt Walsh. You definitely don't want Matt Walsh on your ass going after Eli and justifiably so. I completely support the fact that they are attacking Eli and trying to get the law on this person because you cannot be sending drugs to children over the internet and think you're a righteous person, think that you're a moral person, think that you're doing the right thing. In a since deleted post, she said, there are over 20 states trying to criminalize hormone therapy, particularly for trans youth, for good reason my take. Uh, so my friends and I had an idea. Sending out our extra prescriptions around the country. Sounds completely safe. If you need hormones, I'm working with the distribution network to get you access. Everything is free, no questions asked. We have hundreds of doses of testosterone, estradiol, spironolactone available right now. All are prescribed by doctors and unused. You're not a doctor though, Eli, so the fact that you think you can give children whose bodies are still developing, each package comes with information on dosage, obtaining blood work, etc. I realize this is only a band-aid solution. We need full access to affirmative medical care from professionals immediately. What's most troubling about this is that any type of prescribed medication that's given to you, it has to be done correctly, right? Like every single medication that is prescribed to you by a doctor, there's gonna be instructions on how to take it, what to take, and what your body, what your specific body can take and what your specific body can endure. And everybody's body is different. So the fact that Eli Ehrlich thought that it would be okay to traffic these hormone therapy drugs to minors without knowing what their body could intake is so incredibly dangerous and irresponsible, that alone <laughs> should put this person in jail, in my opinion. But it gets worse. <laughs> it gets a lot worse. So Eli Ehrlich, I guess, in their earlier days of transitioning was, I guess, a mentor to a lot of young, underage trans youth. And according to a lot of these trans youth, Eli Ehrlich was somebody that caused a lot of harm to them. And I have to be careful with how I phrase this because obviously I want this to be, you know, a friendly channel and we know that with censorship and with, with hate speech, you have to be careful with how you say these things. But I'm going to let Blair White explain it a little bit more thoroughly, better than I can, about some of the issues that occurred with Eli Ehrlich and young trans youth, aka minors. One woman accuses Eli of forming an inappropriate relationship with her while she was running an organization called the Trans Student Educational Resources Group and working with young trans people, which go back to the fact that she's having them all DM her to send drugs through the mail. Like, <laughs> the victim was apparently a volunteer in Eli's organization. So right there you see the power dynamic and the power imbalance. The alleged victim specifically said, I do not trust Eli Ehrlich with vulnerable young trans people, especially trans people of color, looking for a hero when they never see their experience represented. This was in 2017 and now in 2022 you have Eli saying, all the trans kids need to DM me and I'll give you drugs. Like, what? A very common thread in a lot of the accusations is that Eli does target African-American women and that they're all trans identified as well. Now, I know that I'm kind of like the black sheep of the trans community, I get it. Even though you would think in a sane world, this freak would be, but whatever. However, I know a lot of people in the community and from the last week of talking to people that I know who have been in contact with Eli in certain circles, it's a very small community. It is a very known thing here at this point that Eli is a sexual abuser and yet still gets this weird pass. I don't get it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, there you go. Like Blair completely displayed why Eli Ehrlich is such a problematic person and why they should be nowhere near minors, much less minors who are trans, because that is a very vulnerable population. And in my opinion, Eli Ehrlich is somebody who is preying on these, these kids because they're looking up to Eli as a strong figure in this movement. I mean, grooming anyone? Grooming? When you see the history, it's almost impossible to look the other way. And the fact that this person is a part of a group of people who are creating curriculums for kindergartners and children about gender ideology and transitioning is like, really? Have none of you guys done the research on this person? I just don't get it. 
I, I just don't get it. And I will never stop saying over and over again on my channel that we must protect children from predators. We must protect children from this type of ideology that is rooted in indoctrination. Get them as young as possible. That is the goal. I want you guys to now watch this clip from the Dr. Phil show from the same episode of a psychiatrist who is on the gender ideology train. And she makes a statement about young boys who identify as being transgendered as young as three and four. Hear what she has to say about this. And then I also want you to hear the rebuttal from one of the teachers who disagrees with her. Signs of gender dysphoria develop very young. Like you can see it in a three-year-old. And by the time they're four, their gender identity is pretty much solidified. So you will see the signs of someone who's not happy with the gender they're born with very little. Actually, that's not true. That is not true. You can suppress Most, it. Their gender expression no, is different. True. Gender all expression the depends on the, the last. All the science for the last 100 years has shown in boys who, who experience gender dysphoria between two and three, 85% of them simply grow up to be gay. And then there are one or 2% the transgender dysphoria persists into adulthood. I mean, the fact that she's sitting here saying that a three-year-old and a four-year-old knows exactly who and what they are at that age and that they can comprehend their gender expression at that age and they have a comprehension is mind-boggling to me. It's insane. And in my opinion, that completely disqualifies her to even be a psychiatrist. I mean, could you imagine if a parent goes to her and says, my child at three said that they're a boy because they want to play with boy toys. And she leads the parents to believe that, oh, that child is trans. Indoctrination. Let's put them on gender affirming counseling. I mean, it's insane to me how these adults who have licenses and who have medical degrees are preying on these children with this insane ideology. It's it's crazy to me. A child that comes over to you and says, mommy, I wanna be a girl. You know what you should ask that child? Hey, Billy, what does being a girl mean to you? What is it that you wanna do that you think makes you want to be a girl? And most likely what you're gonna find is that Billy just wants to play with the Barbie doll or Billy wants to play with the girls or Billy doesn't wanna play sports or Billy wants to do something else that is not conforming to the gender roles, which is perfectly fine, deal with that. But it doesn't mean that Billy at four years old should be indoctrinated and told that Billy really is a girl. That is so dangerous. That is so incredibly dangerous to instill that type of belief onto these children, these impressionable children. And I love, I love, love, love what the teacher said. The actual statistics show that most of these young boys, over 80% of them, who at one point in time thought that they were transitioning to female or thought that they had gender dysphoria, turns out they were just feminine boys who were gay. Wow. Who would have thunk it? There are some people who have commented, who have complained on my TikTok and other social media platforms. Oh, you're so obsessed with the trans agenda and gender ideology. And that's all you talk about. That's all you talk about. And yeah, you know why I talk about it so much? Because it is so prevalent in what's happening in our culture today. And you know who are the main targets for these types of discussions? It's not people in their 20s or 30s or 40s. It's children. It's children in elementary school, in kindergarten, in preschool. All throughout their education system, this is what they're learning. So yeah, I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to continue to talk about it because we should not be normalizing this type of behavior and these types of courses. And the only way to fight back is to talk about it, is to make sure that everybody is aware of what is happening and who are the perpetrators of these types of indoctrination courses. So yes, I'm going to continue to speak about it. Whether you like it or not, tough. On that note, I'm going to sign off. I need like a freaking Red Bull or something because like I'm, I'm just, I'm drained. I'm tired and I'm drained of stuff like this. It drives me absolutely up the wall. But like I said, it's too important not to talk about. If you enjoyed this content, please do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. I'm at 51,000 subscribers. I don't know how I'm growing so fast, but I'm so thankful. I absolutely adore and love every single one of you. I see all of your DMs. I see your messages. I see your comments. You guys are amazing. I love you so much. I'm also available on Instagram and on TikTok under Curly Boy Chuck on all platforms. And I'm growing on those platforms as well. And I'm also getting canceled every single day on those platforms just for you. So if you guys want to support me there, please do be greatly appreciated. Until next time, peace.